Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm here today, if you can guess by my drink, to film Jay's bar in the bookcase tag. I feel like everyone and their mum has done this, except me, so you're probably gonna be really bored of watching it. I try to like think of answers that other people haven't done, but I also haven't watched everyone's because I was like, it's gonna get in my head, I'm gonna get confused. Anyway, today we're drinking a CBD infused sparkling drink so I don't I'm not drinking at the moment because of all the medication I'm, I am on for my health I sort of like teeter between uh like socially drinking not drinking at all and then like enjoying red wine with my Sunday lunch but if I'm being honest with myself I probably shouldn't drink because of um how it makes me feel <laughs> with my health condition but I'm really into CBD drinks at the moment they um help with my heart palpitations and they should like are a nice like switch off for the end of the day um i just tried this brand recently and i just bought like a whole case of them so i'll link them down below if you're interested this one is elderflower mint but in normal times i'm a red wine drinker rosé drinker it has to be pale hate white wine love um gin and tonics like my go-to cocktail cocktail like you know what i mean like spirit but i'm also partial to a dark and stormy like rum rum and ginger beer rum and lemonade um i don't like anything too sweet or fruity so they're my takes i like a negroni but i'll be pissed in five seconds if i have more than one so jay created this tag it's really cool all about different cocktails and books that match them so the first one the question is um, an old-fashioned which i don't like um, i love how i'm just going to give you my opinion on these um <laughs> Uh, these cocktails that you didn't ask for. So an old fashioned, oh my God, can you see how dirty my kitchen is? I don't think you can. Um, excuse the chaotic energy, I'm not very well today. <laughs> and I just like slept for four hours and woke up and was like, I wanna film a video. And um, I've got such bad hand tremors, this random rash on my arm. But anyway, let's get on with the video. Old fashioned historical fiction recommendation. Why, Jay, are you coming for me like this? Like, I'm so offended because you know I don't like historical fiction. When have you ever seen me read historical fiction? So rude. So, my pick is are we gonna say this is historical? It's probably a modern classic and it's James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. It's the only Baldwin I've read. I know, shock horror. Um, very upsetting but I really enjoyed it so it's set in the 50s so I'm gonna say that's historical guys that's like 70 years ago now wow um, and it's a queer romance love story set in Paris I love Paris as a place and I loved reading about the different places like the different parts of the city that they um, Giovanni spent time with and it's a story of a bartender David and Giovanni, no, David's the American and the bartender Giovanni and they start this whirlwind for romance. He's an American visiting the city. She, he's a closeted gay man and is very beautiful, very sad. And I absolutely adored it. Um, I bought this coffee in Amsterdam. It's like an old penguin coffee and I'd really enjoy the snaky man on the cover. But yeah, that's my first pick for the old fashioned. Up next would be a sidecar book with a strong supporting character. This is so hard, I have so many, but I think my pick would be, you've had me rave about this before, Memorial. Um, the mum in Memorial who comes to stay. Memorial is a um, literary fiction book by Brian Washington. I'm a Brian Washington fan. I know a lot of people loved Lot, his short stories, and then didn't care that much for Memorial, but I believe they didn't see the power in Memorial. It's a very colloquial book, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and um, the mother plays such a, a funny, um, esoteric role as this sort of like embodiment of all her son's um, issues. And you can so easily see how her son is manifested to be the person he is because of these traits that she possesses. And she adds a real spice, a third wheel, so to speak, to the relationship because it's Mike and Benson and then the mother and um, Mike leaves to go back to Japan to visit his dying father and it leaves Benson and um, the mum, whose name has slipped my mind, um, in this like tiny one bedroom flat sleeping on the sofa trying to like work out like their relationship as like semi-in-laws but the relationship between the two men is not really working out either so yeah I just really like that and I feel like it added a really good dimension. Okay a Manhattan book set in New York. 
I'm just gonna put it out there guys I am pretty sick of reading books set in New York I'm sorry I've read some really good ones I can list you loads and I'm sure loads of people will also say the same ones I'm thinking of in like the big lit fic genres but I don't know I'm just kind of over it like any book that's marketed as a love letter to New York I'm not really interested anymore um I think there's too much of a good thing sometimes and obviously from a UK perspective like you can only read about one city so much when you don't really have like I don't really have like a desire I've been to New York a couple of times I don't have a desire for it to be like this place everyone thinks is like hot shit I don't know maybe I'm just in a grumpy mood today but I'm not um wow that's annoying don't do that Hannah I'm not that into New York set books but my recommendation would be Sweet Bitter I wonder if it's on my shelves I feel like it's one I always loan out to people by Stephanie Danos I want to say so this is a fiction book she's also got a memoir which I really want to read um but I don't own a copy of it and it's a fiction book about this woman who moves from a small town to New York and she gets into um restaurant work as like a sommelier and like fine wine and food and it's a lot about hunger and um there's a lot of drugs in it and it's just like a coming of age story but like very um finickety detail of life as a restaurant worker and I just really enjoyed that I love a book that like goes into extreme detail about one very specific thing like how real life goes into science even though I'm not a science person I guess Sweet Bitter worked like was more naturally appealing to me because I am interested in food and wine but yeah I just absolutely adored that one next up would be a Bloody Mary I hate Bloody Marys because I hate tomato juice my brother always orders them on airplanes and I think it's the grimmest thing in the world um sorry if you're a Bloody Mary fan also like celery's not even that ugh. just no it's a no from me so my pick would be oh sorry that's a book that messed you up I don't know how that connects to Bloody Mary is it just because it's got that word in it messed you up or scared you so I'm not a horror or really occasionally a thriller reader but like not I will perhaps avoid a thriller if I know it will actually scare me but a book I read recently which was terrifying for its realness there's a couple actually but I'm gonna say Consent by Vanessa Springora Jay actually told me to pick this up because he got an arc of it and then I saw that it was on NetGalley and it's a memoir that's been translated from the French about a girl who is um, groomed and sexually abused by her high school teacher. No, not a teacher. I'm getting mixed up with my job, Vanessa, which is also fits this category, but by a like famed writer in Paris um, and how it's sort of like accepted at the time because of the French trying to assert themselves as this like culturally liberal, sexual freedom kind of state and how her mother approves of the relationship and the other people her mother works in um the literary business and everybody knows that this man grooms grooms girls and boys as well like in the philippines in paris and everyone sort of turns a blind eye because he's an artist and he's such a good writer and i think it's a really disgusting but like very worthwhile exploration of like power and guilt and survival as a victim and she's now runs one of the biggest literary agencies or publishing houses in Paris and now has written this story but it's crazy for how many years that he followed her into her adulthood and was accepted and he still like hasn't gone to prison for it just absolutely terrifying um up next is an espresso martini a book that kept me reading into the night I'm actually a caffeine free gal which is so lame um, because it messes with my heart rate, guys, caffeine. I was used to be like a two Red Bull a day girl when I was at college. Now I can't touch it, I'm decaf only. Um, but a book that kept me reading into the night is Mayflies by Andrea Hagen. You probably would have heard me rave about this already, but I feel like you've heard me rave about all these books. This book, the ending, the, like, the last 50 pages are so incredibly sad. I was crying like blubbering while turning the pages but knowing that I needed to know how it ended even though I could see the ending coming and I knew how devastating it was going to be like I needed that finality before I went to bed and oh so it's a book of two halves sort of starts in um, 1980 Scotland with these two boys who are coming of age um it's Thatcher it's Thatcher Britain it's 
austerity, it's the mines are closing, it's a lack of opportunity, and they go to Manchester for this blowout weekend to the Hacienda to see all these bands. Um, and it's all like very laddie and you're on a big lark and whatever. And then we fast forward like 40 years and it's um, the mid 2000s and one of them is diagnosed with terminal cancer. And it's this really beautiful coming into themselves relationship between these two men who've known each other for so long, whose lives have taken such different paths, but they're so tied together by their coming of age. And it's just so beautiful. And it's also a lot about assisted dying and access to healthcare and wow it's just beautiful and it i had to know the ending before i went to sleep and i still dreamt about it afterwards <laughs> okay a sazerac which i actually don't even know what cocktail that is that must be an american thing um a book that left you disorientated i struggled with this one because i feel like lots of books that leave me disorientated i often don't enjoy maybe or like I can think of books that are popular that people would name as disorientating, like Earthlings by Sakura Murata. I don't know if I want to read that, but people describe that as very um, disorientating. My other pick would be Little Scratch by Rebecca Watson. I wrapped that up, I think, I was just checking her surname, <laughs> a couple of months ago. And it's written in a very interesting, like experimental Max Porter-esque prose style. And it documents a single day in the life of a sexual assault survivor um it's very heavy but i think it really illustrated that duality between living through everyday consciousness while your brain is operating on this separate level and the way you compartmentalize trauma i thought it was so well done and it left me it was compulsive to read but so heavy so when i left reading it i was it was one of those books that takes its emotional toll on you do you know what i mean like sometimes i'm will clock my um, like I suffer from depression anyway but I will clock my mood going downhill and it would still even now as a reader of however many years I've read books will forget that like the books I read are influencing the way I think and that book was like, I was so down that weekend that I read it and I think that's not to say I don't want to read those books but it just I guess is credit to how powerful books can be and I remember reading that and sort of looking away once it finished and looking out from the sofa and thinking like wow like that was that was wild <laughs> um so that would be my pick for that one okay a long island iced tea a book that's doing too much a bonus point if it works anyway my pick for this i it's hard for a book that does too much because I quite like multiple perspective or multiple character art books, but I'm going to say Who They Was by Gabriel Kras. This is a piece of auto fiction that was up for the booker last year that I read and Tom read and he bo we both really enjoyed it. Although I took some issue with the representation of women, but I do think it's a book that does a lot. So it's written in a colloquial South London slang which I guess for international readers particularly would be quite hard to navigate it's got a lot of run-on sentences it's very violent and in your face um I don't read a lot of books like it but the perspective it gave me was really interesting and this idea of London as a city that we don't know as middle class people this um this alternative London this alternative city that people operate in that um like rotates around violence and um, crime and drugs and yeah I thought it was it was really interesting but like just a lot to take on all at once but I, I think for the most part it did um it was pulled off for me a Negroni a book with a love triangle I wonder if Alex from what page you on is watching this because I was very upset when he slandered this book the other day although I know Kieran liked it and I'm waiting for Jay to read it because I know Jay will like it and that is Swimming in the Dark this is a love story set in um, Poland. It's um, post-communism, it's falling. There is a new lease of government. People are not sure what they want. And we follow two characters who are both closeted queer men and they are trying to, they meet at like a university um, enforced uh, agricultural program they have to do in the summer and they meet and they swim in this lake and it's all very sexy and then they go back to the city and they're trying to navigate how they can as I should say at this point it's not acceptable to be and uh, like out as an LGBTQ plus person in Poland um and they're trying to navigate their relationship with each other while one of them 
very much believes in the meritocracy and the idea of the neoliberal state um, pushing forward and individualism will be the thing that gets them where they need to be. So he is invested in, you know, cheating the system or um, making political connections. And the other one is very much a believer in community and um, collective action and desires the best for everyone and is also wrestling with his religion. But the love triangle is that there is a third person, a woman, who the um, character that believes in neoliberalism decides in the end that he must go forward as a heterosexual man because of the position that puts him in society and it's heartbreaking. But one that I wish more people would read, unless you're going to slander it like Alex, then don't read it. <laughs> but I think it's a really beautiful book. Um, the next one is Bay Breeze. I also don't know what cocktail that is. Um, a book with a light, chill or heartwarming vibe. I would normally say Writers and Lovers, that's my go-to, but I spoke about that recently in a brain fog book video, so I don't want to be boring and say that again. So my pick is Samantha Irby, who I also do talk about all the time, but her essay collections to me are the perfect mix of funny, light, smart, intelligent, like laugh my head off funny, but she's making these really sharp quips about life in America as a black queer woman, living as a fat woman, and she can talk about her experience in the emergency room having a bout of IBD, but also about how awful their, medic their medical system is over there and what that means for chronically ill folk. So she's my ultimate go-to. I only have one of her books left to read. I've listened to all of them on audio because she narrates them herself, so obviously we love that. Um, I've only got one left to read and I'm sort of saving it because it's the perfect pick-me-up for me. She's like my go-to for when I want something like that. Um, but I don't know that many books like that, so if you do have recommendations for smart but chill books, let me know. Okay, um, A Dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling and menacing. Points if the setting matched. Okay, my pick for this is drive your plow over the bones of the dead this is probably one of the like most literary books i read last year i'm surprised i didn't actually put it on my top 10. i don't know why i didn't i guess i thought that i don't know So it's a translated book and it's set in the 60s and it's about a rural village in Poland right on the border to um, on the Czech border and it's set in winter it's very remote it's very snowy so the atmosphere is very creepy there's a lot of stuff about dead animals and forest animals and taxidermy and this idea of a a book that's a non-event but yet so much happens so you are in the head of this um a woman who is like an older protagonist which I feel like I don't read that many books with older protagonists and then she is sort of looking at the works of William Blake also trying to uncover this sort of mystery it's slightly um Mosheveckian I would say in tone in that way of like a female cat alone female protagonist that's slightly an oddball and trying to investigate something um I thought her her depiction of loss was very good and just the remoteness of the place. There's one part where she describes the police needing to come in and there's like this um this uh, this like ring where part of the village is and it's so detached from everything and I thought I don't know, I just think it's really excellently done. It's definitely like a brainy book, it takes a lot to read, I felt, but I really enjoyed it. Okay, the last one is a martini, my mum's favourite, but not for me, unless it's a gym martini, but no olives. Um, a classic recommendation. Here you are again, Jalen, coming for me when I hate classics. Um, my pick for this is a non-fiction book because I'm put... Oh no, it's not that it's non-fiction, but I feel like this is a non-fiction, that it's a classic seminal piece of non-fiction and that is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. It, she is part of the wave of feminists that came before. Um, she's like part of Hooks and uh, Angela Davis and those like seminal intersectional feminists who talk about um, liberation from a ground up movement and in her book she talks about uh, being 
black, being queer, having a son, and it's just a really excellent collection of essays and speeches that she's given, and it's a definitely like a good place to start. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> A good place to start with um, Audre Lorde if you haven't read her before and I really adored it and learned so much from it and it's reminded me I need to like pick back up more of her stuff um, because she also has a lot of poetry and a couple more non-fictions. So that's my classics pick. I feel like everyone has done this tag already but I'm tagging, let me get my list up, Daniel from Guilty Feet because I'm sure he has some great takes and I feel like he's a man who kn knows about cocktails and drinks so tell us i feel like literally everybody else has done it um i wonder if tammy's done it from oh no i think she has i already saw I'm trying to think who i've seen oh i'll tag rahul rahul from rahul reads um i've been watching their channel recently and it's really nice so i would love to see them do it and uh what chapter it's from what chapter are you on anyone else who wants to do the video i would love to see so thank you so much for watching i will be back in another time with another video hopefully feeling less sick so see you guys next time bye